With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving an I-75 just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us basically that uh, there's nobody that compares to Moses in the history of man, saving Jesus Christ, who literally was the son of God. Moses was a faithful servant in the house. Of course, Jesus, it was his house. But Moses had a very special place in the plans and purposes of God. And here in Exodus chapter 33, he prays and said, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Now, can you imagine how much Moses loved God? The Lord had sent him to Egypt to deliver the children of earth from the bondage of slavery. They had, through 10 miraculous events, been delivered. And Moses is leading these people, again, through many miracles, to the promised land. Going to the land of promise, the destination that was in front of them, Moses made something very clear to God. I want the presence more than I want the promise. Church, how many know that's the kind of people we need to be? We know that in, Lord, in the Lord, the Bible says, bless the Lord, but forget not all of his benefits at Mount Zion. We believe in the benefits of the cross, and we believe in the benefits that God has for us. We believe in pursuing all these things, but always remember the presence, the Lord himself must be first priority. Amen? And that's why the children of Israel missed the opportunity to get the truly satisfied life because that was not their major motivation. They were seeking for the wrong thing. But I want you to notice here that Moses said, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I might know you. Now, in recent times, the Lord has sent a wave. The Bible says that God blows upon the church with winds of doctrine, and it's a purifying way that God brings deliverance to his house. And one of the winds that's blowing now is the doctrine of grace, and it's been refreshing for a lot of people. But unfortunately, it's also revealed the hearts of people, too, because some people hold the message of grace, and they say, oh, see, because of grace, God loves me no matter what, so I don't have to do anything to get his approval or and they began to think that grace is an opportunity to lower God's expectation of them and just kind of do their own thing. Now, Moses didn't look at grace like that. When Moses saw grace, he said, wow, look what grace has given me so far. How many know God chooses us, and that's grace, God's unmerited favor? Why? Because he chose us first. And it's so important that we would understand that grace is so important in who we are, certainly. And it's not the message of grace that's bad. It's when people have the wrong heart. And that's true of every message of the Bible. There's a message of prosperity a lot of people make fun of these days. But it's in the Bible. It's just when people have the wrong heart that it becomes wrong. How many you know what I'm talking about here? So we want to love the doctrine, and yet we always want to make sure that our heart is right in the Lord so that we can have the fullness of what we have. So here's Moses. Oh, I have grace. I have grace. God has chosen me. Okay, if I have grace, I want more of you. Show me now your way that I might know you and that I may find grace in your sight. He was looking for more grace. What kind of grace was he looking for? To him, grace was God's choice of him. To him, God gave to him favor by inviting him into his presence. Moses was taken by surprise in his first meeting with God. He was out in the backside of a desert just doing his job, and all of a sudden he sees this bush is on fire, and it is not consumed, so he goes and he says, what's going on here? And boom, the voice of God comes from that burning bush. How many know that would have been an awesome experience? And he said to that bush, well... Who are you? What is your name? What should I tell people when I say I met God in a burning bush? God said to him, I am who I am. 
Tell people that the I am has sent you. God is basically declaring, how do we know God is who he is? Amen? And that's so important because so oftentimes we try to make God what we want him to be. Oh, God, if you would just be this way. But Moses knew right away, hey, God is I am who I am. He is who he is. But Moses saw something so amazing in God, he always wanted more. And and Moses was not young at the time of his meeting place with God there. As a matter of fact, he was 80 years old, and and that seems to be a key age in the Bible when people are being used. That's the same age as Joshua and Caleb as they were going into the promised land. I tell you, we think we're too old too soon. Amen? Amen. Just met this Sunday. We had a, some missionary friends who were here, and I had them stand up. They come once a year. They're in their early 80s, still on the mission field, and they come once a year for his mom's birthday. And this year she was 101, and she just loved the church service on Sunday morning, and, and she's just still vital for the Lord. And so I said, you know, there's still something you can do. Amen? We got to understand it's from grace to grace that he's calling. And here's Moses. He's like, show me your way way that I might know you. Now, we already know, and I'm backing up verses in this chapter, that Moses had an amazing relationship with God. It says, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of the cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses, and all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, And all the people rose and worshiped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. So when Moses said, Lord, show me your way. If I found favor in your sight, show me more of you. We're not talking about a person that didn't already have something awesome. He he was a man who had such an amazing relationship with God. The people were standing off watching. When he went to see God, you wanted to watch because something amazing was going to happen. And when he went into the tabernacle, the pillar of the cloud descended at the door. And the Bible says that God spoke to him face to face as a man would his friend. Now, what I also want you to see in these verses, how that the fullness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is revealed in this chapter. Because so oftentimes people think that, well, there's the God of the Old Testament who sent his son, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. Kind of was a new kind of God with a new order. No, it's the same God. Amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, you search the scriptures, and in them you think you have eternal life, and they are what speak about me. So we see that Holy Spirit in that pillar of the cloud, also the pillar of fire, also that led them by night. How do you know the sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit of God? Amen? So the picture's already there. The face that Moses would have saw would have been the face of Jesus. He said, Lord, show me your way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and, and so we see this intimacy of relationship that he had with God in this face-to-face encounter as well. And the reason it's important to see this is because it also lets us know that God has been revealing himself throughout the ages, the same God, who now wants to reveal himself greater to us, the body of Christ today, and each and every one of us. And of course, he also prays, Lord, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And again, Jesus in the New Testament said, no one hath seen the Father, but the Son hath declared him. And so this is the same picture we see here. Moses is basically saying, let me see you in all that you are. And Jesus Christ is in the midst of that glory, declaring concerning the Father, and that's what he said he did here when he was on earth, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Moses wanted to see the glory, but God wanted him to understand, Moses, you're asking for something that's dangerous, really. Now, we read a story like that, and we think, wow, that's an exciting story. But how many know if you were in the story, it might take a little greater significance in in your feelings and your emotions of the moment? God, I want to see your glory. Well, you need to know something. If you look at this wrong, you're going to fall over dead. 
maybe I don't want to see your glory. Reminds me, several years ago, there was a new lady in the church, and she just started loving the Lord, and she really got into the things of God, and we prayed over her, and she just really got into it, and somebody went up to her and said, do you realize you almost got slain in the spirit? She goes, you can die from this? <laughs> She's about ready to quit coming. But anyway, this is basically what Moses is looking at here, but that wasn't going to stop Moses. How many you know... If you really want to grow in a relationship, you have to give up something about yourself. You talk about marriage, male and female. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus is one of the books. And there, there was a lot of information, classes, and all kinds of stuff talking about male and female gender differences. And uh, we have to understand, certainly, male and female, there are differences. And we understand now society is saying, oh, a lot of that is society and a good deal of thoughts do come from our society's inclination, but I tell you, men and women are different. Anybody have that revelation yet? And of course, the spectrum of that is pretty wide, but if you're going to get two people living together and they're going to have a relationship that's growing, how many know there has to be a little bit of giving up of yourself to get anywhere? I, I read a book several years ago about that. It was actually a secular book. It was called Brain Sex. And I remember I was in Florida on vacation at the pool reading the book, and all of a sudden I thought, I wonder why people are wondering about this book I'm reading. <laughs> but anyway, it was about the male and female differences as well. And this physicist, or actually a, a, a person who was a doctor of the brain, she had come to the conclusion that it would be logically impossible for a man and woman to live together for a lifetime. I'm glad I heard no amen. Oh, I was going to say, I'm glad I didn't hear any amens on that. But anyway, whether it's marriage and the differences or the body of Christ as we come together from all of our different lifestyles and backgrounds, how, how many know to really build a relationship, you have to be willing to let go of something of yourself? So it's only a logical conclusion that we would have with God, that if we were going to say, God, I want to see your glory, is it going to cost me a little of myself? Yeah, it has to, because if I'm going to get into that kind of relationship, the Bible says, as far as the heavens are from the earth, that's how far our ways are from God's ways. So you're talking about the differences here between us and God. How do you know there's mystery in the pursuit of God? And how many know that as you walk with God, there, there's something that happens. You go through things sometimes that cost you something. But the God seeker understands that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called in accord to his purposes. So like Moses, we need to say, God, I know it has cost me something, and it might cost me a little bit more, but Lord, I want to see your glory. There's a place in you I want to go that I'm willing to take the risk. Come on, do you want it? Can you see the face of the Almighty God? And do you want to see the glory and say, Lord, take me to that place that's beyond myself, because in that place, I certainly will have to get out of myself to get into the place that you have for me. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock. I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Now, we understand from that chapter itself that Moses did see God face to face, but that was, in a sense, not seeing the ultimate reality of God in an unveiled perspective in the sense that it all comes through Jesus Christ. How many know Jesus Christ puts the face on God. He is the visible image of the invisible God, the Bible says. When the disciples were talking to him as he was getting ready to go, they said, oh, Lord, if you just show us the Father, it would be sufficient for us. He says, have I been so long time with you and you don't know who I am? I've come to declare the Father, the Father's in me. It's just like it was in Exodus 33. If you want to see the glory, of course, it's going to be the same manner. It's going to be through the Spirit. It's going to be through Jesus Christ. But taking you to a greater revelation and a reality of letting him declare something to you. 
Lord, I want to see your glory. I want you to put me in that place. And I want you to know something. Just like the prophecy tonight where God's been preparing the people, I want you to understand something. You're in a place right now where God has you, where he wants you to see his glory. And in this time, we have to understand, no matter what it feels like when we're in that rocky place, no matter what it feels like, like that hand is covering us up, we need to say, Lord, in this place, I declare, I want to see your glory. I want to see you like I've never seen you before. I know what it was to have you as my personal Savior. I know what it was to be filled with your Spirit. But now I want to know you like I've never known you before. Father, show us your glory in this day. Speaking of these same images in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth talks about Moses who when he went up into the mountain to experience the glory presence of God, that when he came down, his face literally shone, and the children of Israel literally put a veil over his face because they couldn't look and see the glory because they had not been ready for it yet. It says even to this day when Moses is read, speaking about the law of the Old Testament, there is still a veil on their heart. In the Old Testament, there was a veil put on Moses to cover the glory. But in the New Testament, when Jesus stood before them, there was the veil, but it was on their heart. Because of this, they still couldn't see the glory. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. How many of you know when you turn to Jesus Christ, you begin to look at the world from a different perspective? Do you know what I'm talking about? How many's had that experience where Jesus Christ, you turn to him and like, wow, the world has taken on a whole new perspective. <laughs> There's the son. Then what happens when you get the Holy Spirit? Well, we know we receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. But we also have to understand that the Spirit gives us the freedom because we're to worship our Father in spirit and in truth. It gives us the freedom, the liberty to begin to behold the living God. And now this is that third level, the third place, but we with an unveiled face, because our hearts have been changed, the Spirit has given us perspective, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Church, you're being transformed right now, amen? And this is why we're here tonight, because we're going to present ourselves for more transformation. We're being transformed into the same image from what? Glory to glory. Now, you know you've tasted of his glory before. It's just there's another glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Beholding as in a mirror, the glory of God. Now, one of the verses I've used a lot lately is the one in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, we now look into a mirror and we see dimly, but one day we'll see face to face. One day we'll know him as we also are known. So I've been sharing how that the more we see of him in that mirror, the more something happens inside of us. And that's such a powerful work and the Bible talks about the mirror being what? The Word of God. How many know when Jesus spoke of the Word, he said, you know, you're always looking for something in the Word. And the scripture I used earlier is he said, you search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life, but they're about me. Now I'm standing in front of you and you don't know who I am. He's basically saying, of course, we all want eternal life. People have been looking at that for a long time. And there's a lot of things we want from God. But if we're not careful like the children of Israel, those desires could literally give us a, 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 a blindness in seeing the reality of who God is because God says, don't look for life, look for me who am life. When you look into the mirror of the word, be looking for me, says the Lord, and you're going to find out all those benefits are just going to be there. Now, having said that, I want one more scripture. And this is when Moses first started 
his walk with God. Now, Moses was a man who wanted the glory. Moses was the man who had a meeting place with God. Moses was the man who wanted more of God. But going all the way back to chapter 4, when he first meets God and the Lord calls him, he said, oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servants. This is after he's met God at the burning bush. And after he's had that awesome experience and God tells him what he wants him to do, he's like, that was an awesome experience, but seeing you in the burning bush didn't change me yet. I'm still the same person. Oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since I saw you in the burning bush, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your what mouth, and I will teach you what you will say. In other words, Moses, you're looking in the mirror, and all you're seeing is yourself. That's why when you went there at the burning bush, you had this amazing experience. The word came to you, and yet you haven't seen the change yet. Because Moses, you're looking in the mirror and still seeing yourself. And so you're looking in the spirit and you're saying, oh, I can't do that. I can't speak. I can't talk. I'm not a good, I'm too shy. Matter of fact, I'm about afraid of everything there is in life. That's what Moses basically said to God. And God said, Moses, Quit looking at yourself in the mirror. You're supposed to see me in the mirror. And if you let me go with you, Moses, I will not only be with your mouth, but I will teach you every step of the way. And Moses, as you begin to see me, your life is going to be changed. That's why Moses was a God seeker, because he said, Lord, I know I see you face to face. I know I've been in the midst of your presence, but I want more. I want to see the glory, Lord, because I don't want to see me in the mirror anymore. I want to see you. Amen, church. Amen. Let's bow our heads. God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.